Here's part two of our conversation with Tower of Power. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. In this series, we talk to three of the main guys in this band. Leader, tenor sax player, and lead vocalist, Emilio Castillo. And on baritone sax, Stephen Doc Kupka. And legendary drummer, David Garibaldi. Well, uh, tell me about your first impression of uh, meeting Rocco. Well, <laughs> I met him when I was 14. You know, he was 13, and we met at wood shop. He was sitting kitty corner at the wood shop bench. We were taking a test, and uh, the guy was speaking out questions, and we were supposed to write the answers. And so, you know, I looked at him, he looked at me, and the guy said something, and I wrote down the answer really quick. And then the next time the guy said a question, Rocco went really fast, you know, tried to do a fa- And we sort of had this little thing. And then after about three times doing that, we kind of laughed at each other. And, uh, you know, we liked each other immediately. Just how good he was. What a good player. You know, I didn't know yet that it was all instinct. And, the, you know, he played with not the way you teach a, a student to play. He was self-taught and he, he played and uh, he had that instinct. And, uh, man, what a player. At, at the time... Emilio was telling him everything to play. You know, Emilio was definitely the mastermind of the rhythm section, you know, and then, um, so he would tell him every note. I mean, then later on, it wasn't that way. Uh, but Rocco never did read notes. He read chords. I loved them. I thought they were just unique. And then when we started playing together, it was just, uh, we just fell right into each other, you know, fell right in, in step, you know, and, we hang out all the time and play and, you know, Tower Power was like seven days a week. It's, it's a, a lifestyle, you know, and when we were all living here in the Bay Area, we would rehearse every day. We lost our guitar player. And mind you, we're kids, you know, we don't even have a bass player at all. So I'm thinking we need another guitar player. And somebody says, Frank Hutton plays guitar. Frank Hutton was Rocco's real name at the time. And, uh, I told the guys, I go, uh, <laughs> this guy, Frank Hutton, I hear he plays guitar. I go, and he's, he's a cool guy. And I go, he's got really cool hair. <laughs> he had this big mop, you know. And, uh, and they went, cool hair? Cool. <laughs> and we brought him in. Couldn't play guitar at all. I mean, he was like <clears throat> horrible, you know. And my dad had hired a teacher, this great guitar player named Terry Saunders out of the Bay Area. And he would come once a week and teach us as a band how to play a song. And so the first thing he did when he came, he said, I want each of you guys to play. So he told my brother, play your drums. You know, my brother played what he knew. Jody played what he knew. I played my sax. You know, none none of us could play at all, you know. And he points to Rocco and he goes, play your guitar. And you know, and he goes, you need to play the bass. And we all, all together, we go, what's the bass? And he goes, never mind, you need one. <laughs> Within two weeks, he was better on the bass than seven years of guitar. He had played guitar seven years. He was horrible. But within two weeks, he was like, doom, 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 doom. You know, he, he knew how to play the bass. He's just a natural, 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 badass bass player. We started a lot of guys were using their thumbs, yeah. and he always used his two fingers. And uh, now... People all use their two fingers. Very few people use their thumbs now. So uh, yeah, he was very instrumental in changing that, I do believe. Did you get a chance to say goodbye to Rocco? Well, not in that sense. Um, you know, we didn't really speak a lot in the last few months, you know, of his life, you know. And when we had to make the decision to um, tell him to stay home, that's what we did, it was very tough on everybody. But it was absolutely had to happen for his health, you know, the the life of the band and all that stuff. So we, I think we had almost a month of different meetings to so everybody could talk and get to the place where everybody could sort of agree that this is what we got to do. Yeah. He was in the hospital and, uh, you know, he's pretty out of it. Yeah. And his caretaker, Mickey, uh, good, you know, our, our good buddy, uh, I called and he answered the phone and uh, I go, can I talk to him? You know, and he goes, uh, yeah, he goes, he, he's, he's sort of coherent, you know. And, and so he, it was a video call and he puts it to him. He goes, uh, Rocco, it's Mimi. You know, that's my nickname. 
And uh, I go, hey, Frank. I always call him Frank, you know, to let him know that I, I knew him when, you know. I go, hey, Frank. And I reminded him of this story. When we were kids, he had a 39 Oldsmobile. And, uh, it, you know, it, was, it didn't run or nothing. But one day we got it running. <laughs> and me and my brother and Frank got in that car and Frank's driving. And we went over by the community center. And there was like a forest over there. And we were kind of driving the car through that forest. And we came out onto the grassy area by the community center. And there was uh, all these hippies. <laughs> it was a bee-in. It was uh, before Lovins, they have what was called bee-ins. And it was a bee-in. And we, we drove into it. And we drove right through the hippies in this 39 holes, you know. <laughs> and we were laughing, you know. And, uh, and, and then we joked that we were playing Al Capone Goes to the Jungle. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I said, hey, man, you remember when we played Al Capone goes to the jungle and we came into the bee and, and he looks at me, he starts, he, goes, <laughs> he laughs, you know, and, uh, and we talked for a second. And then I said, I love you. And he goes, oh, I love you, too, you know, and then uh, and that was it, you know. And then Mickey said, uh, you know, he comes to every so often. If he comes to again, you want to talk to him? I go, yeah, you know, and then he didn't call me for two days. And, uh, and when I talked to him, he said, no, he goes, he, he never came to again. He goes, you're the last one he talked to. He goes, but he knew it was you. Yeah. I go, no, I know he knew. Oh. He remembered the story and everything. Did you have a chance to say goodbye to him? I did. I did. It was like, uh, he was very sick, but, uh, you know, um, yeah, he had a lot of health problems at the end. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, I got a chance to say goodbye. And I think the hardest part of it was for Mimi because Mimi and him had been playing together since they were like 15 years old. And, you know, Mimi was like kind of his, his voice in a way, you know, he would even answer for him sometimes when we we're talking, and, you know, Rocco and him in the studio, you know, he kind of helped Rocco with his parts and that kind of stuff, you know, so they had a, a very, very deep relationship. My relationship with Rocco was mostly on the musical level. And because personally, you know, when he was doping and doing all the stuff that he was doing, that was very hurtful to me. I didn't like it because I just thought that this is this dude is so badass and he's so talented and he's doing all this stuff with his life. I mean, what's up with that? And it was, it was really frustrating to me. And so those kind of things were always seemed to be in the way of having a relationship that was, you know, really smooth. Now, the music part of it, that was gold. Yeah. But we never spoke. We never talked about it. And I think the times when we did talk about music, it was probably when it was the poorest. But Rocco had the ability to fit himself into the music and with the drummer, and no matter who the drummer was, he just had this kind of radar, you know, that was unlike anyone. And he was just such a unique, cool player, you know, and a really, and a, and a cool person too, you know, he was, he was really something, but no, I didn't, didn't say to goodbye to him at the end. Well, I'll have more of our conversation with a great tower of power coming up in three, four days. Make sure you comment on our video, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Stream Music.